The way we traditionally understand memory is to study amnesia. So if a brain region or process is important for memory, then disrupting it should cause amnesia. Broadly defined, amnesia is a loss in memory due to some specific stereotyped cause. Head trauma, stress, drug abuse, aging, degenerative disease, development, infectious disease. All of these things can cause amnesia. Many of us have already suffered amnesia due to one of these causes. Even if we haven't, one in three of us will experience some form of dementia if we live to be over 65. What if we could get some of those memories back? What if those memories were not lost but just locked somewhere in our brain and not completely retrievable? We often think of memory as a book, words written in a book, stored in a library. Amnesia could be because we've lost that book. It's been destroyed and we're not getting that information back. Or it could be because the book is somewhere in the library but we just don't know where to find it. In neuroscience at the moment, we're exploring a fascinating new frontier whereby we're able to find and manipulate specific memory representations in the brain. How do we do this? It happens that certain genes are used by the brain to signal when a cell is active and we've genetically hijacked these genes in order to tag them. In essence, we're making the cells glow. We're making particular cells holding a particular memory glow a particular color and then we can manipulate those cells directly using electrical techniques. When we made this technology and applied it to amnesia, we found that when we induced amnesia due to drug treatment, the mice was unable to perform a behavioral task. He seemed to not remember. But when we stimulated those engram cells directly, the mouse was able to retrieve the memory. And similarly, when we engineered mice to genetically contract Alzheimer's disease, they appeared to not remember the task, but again, stimulation of those cells resulted in normal memory retrieval. So how is the memory actually stored? And why does it become lost in cases of amnesia? One candidate for memory storage is engram cell connectivity, the anatomical connections between engram cells changing in the brain in a permanent fashion. If you want to store a long-term memory, you don't write it in sand, you write it in stone in a stable state. This doesn't mean that memories are immutable, that they can't change. We know that memories can be updated through our lives by a process of further learning. And just as a message can be written in stone, it can be modified by further carving into that sculpture. Memory is an evolving piece of work.